God bless you, saints. This is Pastor Rodney Guthrie with Making Disciples. And we're coming to you with our Bible study presentation. And we're going to be talking about the resurrection. Yes, the resurrection. We're going to be dealing with this. Paul says, without the resurrection, we're the pity of all people. If Jesus didn't get up, we might as well close up shop and go home. But hey, God raised him from the dead. And that life that is in him is also now in us. When we died, we died with him. And we were buried with him. And we rose with him. Right now, we have this life. And we have five areas we want to deal with in this study right here. In this short presentation, we want to deal with five areas. Number one, giving his life to you. Christ has given his life to you, to us. Amen. Number two, Christ in you. Yes, Christ in you. Your hope of glory. Number three, we want to deal with number three, a brand new creation. A brand new creation. We are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And we want to talk about that and see what the word has to say about that. Number four, a brand new identity. A brand new creation. Now there's a brand new identity. Oh, glory to God. And then we're going to deal with living under grace. Now that we Christ has given his life for us and uh christ in us and we have a brand new creation and we have a new identity well how do we live well we're living under grace we're living under grace so we're going to get right into this get your bibles and come on sit down with me and let's up together and see what god is going to say to us about this resurrection what does it really mean in christ jesus amen so grab your bible and let's go to it Well, are you ready? Let's take a look at this. First, I want to go to John chapter 11, verse 25, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He's quoting this to, to Mary and Martha. He's allowing the crowd to understand something, that he is the resurrection. Not only is he the resurrection, but he is the life. The power of the resurrection is that he brings things to life. He is the one that calls the things that be not though as they were. So Jesus is quoting, I am the resurrection. She said to Jesus, she says, I know Lazarus would get up at the end when, when, he, when, when the end comes. He said, no, 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 no. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he telling her, he said to her, do you believe? I'm telling you to believe. And then he quotes and he says, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live yet shall he live we're talking about giving his life to us he gave his life for us at the cross now he's given his life to us at the resurrection let me say that to you again he gave his life for us at the cross but he's given his life to us at the resurrection Christ has given his life to us. That spirit, God raised him from the dead. That same spirit has raised us from the dead. Amen. Go with me. First Peter, look at this, look at 3 and 18. Let's look, take a look. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, for Christ, the Messiah himself, died for sins once for all times. He died for sins once for all time. He's dealt with sin one, one time. He's not going to come deal with sin again. His dealing with sin, he completed, he finished it. It's done. He dealt with sin. The righteous, which is he is the righteous, for the unrighteous, talking about us. That, excuse me, the just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty. He's the innocent and we're the guilty. Amen. And then he goes to say that he might bring, that he might bring us to God. Is he bringing us to God guilty? Is he bringing us to God in shame and fault? All that he did, uh, is he presenting us to God guilty? No, no, he's not. Saints, he's presenting us to God holy. He's presenting us to God uh, without guilt, but he's presenting us to God righteous and holy and, and, and acceptable. God has accepted us in the beloved. He's presenting us to God with a work that has been completed. 
a work that has been done, what God has sent him to do. God was able to what? To put his spirit on the inside of us. Amen. He was able what? to make us alive. He was able to bring us out of darkness and to the marvelous light. So he says, in his human body, he was put to death. Faith, we have been put to death. What do you mean we have been put to death by faith? By faith, we have been put to death. The faith that we're trusting in is that it, it already happened. Jesus has already died. So he says, consider yourself, what, dead with me because I've already died. If he hadn't already died, well, then we can't do it by faith. Doing it by faith, receiving it by faith because it's already done. It's a past tense. It's already done. So he is in his human body. He was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit. We have been made alive in the spirit when he gave his life to us it's his spirit he gave us the spirit we have the spirit of christ hallelujah to so do what? what what happened it made us alive unto the living god it made us alive unto god as sons and daughters unto god oh glory to god he gave his life to us this is the life you have. This is the life we have. It's without sin. Sin is not even the issue anymore. Oh, glory. We are reigning in life through the righteousness of God. Amen. He gave his life to you. Do you believe it? The, res the resurrected life means Christ in you. Let's talk about it. Christ in you. Your hope of glory. Amen. Christ in you, your hope of glory. That has been the mystery about the resurrection. This was a mystery that Paul was talking about. Christ in you. It was hidden from the ages, but he has made it known what to his saints, to his people, that it is Christ in you, your hope of glory. Let's take a look at this scripture, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. He says, to them, his saints, God has chosen to make known among you, among the Gentiles, he says, the glorious riches of this mystery. This is the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. This resurrection, this life that he is giving to us, uh, is not a life that he has given to us to go out and live in the state that we're in or to go out and try to practice to live like him or to go out and try to mimic him. He didn't come to, uh, to show us uh, the, the way that, the example, in other words, he the example, whatever Jesus do, I'm supposed to do. The way he lived, I'm supposed to live. His example is that he is Christ. He is the perfect Lamb of God. He is the only one. He's the Son of God. The first Son of God who can live, not only who can live this life, He is the life. <laughs> he is the Christian life. And He has given us His life, His Spirit. That life is a relationship with God. So listen, what He says here, the mystery is He gave His life to us. He gave his life for us, that he can give his life to us, that he can live his life through us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this resurrected life that has been given to us, his life that has been given to us, it's a mystery. It was a mystery to them. I reveal it to you, Paul is telling us, that it is Christ in you. This life is in you. You're not trying to pattern it from the outside in, it's from the inside out. His spirit is on the inside of us, crying out, Abba Father. Oh yes, we, the Bible says, our spirit moans and groans. His spirit testifies with our spirit 
that we are what? The children of God. That we are the sons and daughters of God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Christ is in you. If you're born again, the Bible says Christ is in you. His spirit is in you. To do what? To draw you to the Father. Draw you in understanding. For the Holy Spirit has come to reveal to us all things concerning him. Concerning Jesus. And what was Jesus doing? He was revealing the Father to us. As a son, allowed us to see a relationship we can walk in with the Father. Christ in you, your hope. It's the hope. What hope? Hope to be made alive. To hope. To be made alive, to have a fellowship with God. Hope. Christ in you, your hope of glory. He is our glory. He is our glory. He is shining in our hearts, in our lives, and in our minds. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Amen. Let's look at another scripture. He says here in Galatians 2 and 20, listen to this. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. Paul's talking. With Christ. I no longer live. He says, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He lives in me. The life I live in the body, listen, I live by faith in the Son of God. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Listen, he says, the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. What is he saying to us? Paul says, I'm living a life by faith in the Son of God and this body. That what? That I was crucified with Him. Hallelujah. That I was made righteous. I was made complete. I was made sanctified, set apart righteous and accepted in his sight. That's the life I'm living in this body. When he says he's living it by faith, he's living it by a finished work that Christ has completed. I'm living by faith in this body that God has accepted me in the beloved, that God has raised me from the dead through Christ Jesus. I'm living by faith that I have a fellowship, a oneness with God. So Paul says, it's not I that lives, but it's Christ living in me. He's my hope. He's become my hope and he is my glory because he has revealed everything to me that pertain to life and godliness, that I might know the Father and that I might be a son of the living God. I want you to know, if you have believed, Christ is living in you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. That's the love of God that's living in you. That's the power of the love of God that's what residing on the inside of us. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, listen, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Are you standing firm in that? It's not about your body. Your body's been crucified, but it's about his spirit living on the inside. He says, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm living by faith in this love that God has for me in this body. Oh, glory to God. That is unconditional. I'm living by faith by the love of God that he has for me in this body. Amen. Oh, glory to God. This is getting good. This is good. So, let's move on. Let's go and talk about what he says. Now that we found out that Christ has given his life to us. And we look right here and we've seen that uh, uh, we're going to talk about now we are a brand new creation. Hmm. He's given his life to us. Uh so that he can live his life through us. But now let's talk about a brand new creation.
because he's in us. Christ in you. He gave his life to us to be in us. And now we understand something. We're brand new creation. Let's go talk about it. So let's deal with the brand new creation. We are brand new creation. When something is new, it's new. When God makes something new, it's new. So saints, let's get a hold of what's being said here. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. He says, therefore, I like this therefore, because we need to understand what was there before or therefore. And I believe the understanding we need to take here is that the finished work, what was accomplished at the cross. What Jesus finished, he destroyed the power of sin and death. Uh, sin is no longer the issue anymore. We have been brought to God through the power of his love. At the cross, God demonstrated his love, his righteousness. We are no longer under the law, but grace has come in. Father, the Father, God has come in and, 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 and shared the grace through Christ with us that we can see him as he really is and the provision that grace give to us. Therefore, since we understand the death of Christ, he says, look, listen. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. You are, I am, we are a new creation. We are something that never existed before. What do you mean something that never existed before? Well, I was born dead. The Bible says we were born dead in our trespasses and in our sins. To be made alive is something we've never been before. We weren't born alive. Oh, hit me somebody. We were born dead. We were identified with Adam. We were born dead. Not physically dead, but spiritually dead. Separated from God. But now, we have become new creatures. Because we've been made alive. Christ in you. Your hope of glory. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh yes. Listen. He says, for anyone who is in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has gone. What old? Death is gone. And the new has come. What life? We've been made alive. Once you've been made alive, listen, saints, once you've been made alive, you don't die again and then come alive again. You don't die, keep coming back and forth. No, no, no. Once you've been made alive in Christ, that's the eternal life that we have. He dealt with the eternal problem, which was sin. And now we have received of eternal life. The old is gone. We were under the law. Well, the Jews was under the law, but the Gentiles, we've taken the law also. Under the law, the Bible calls the law ministry of death. We were under the ministry of death. We were, the, the law was our schoolmaster. <laughs> but the old has passed and the new has come. In Christ Jesus. Whereby we cry out our Father. We are a new creation. You are a new creation. In Christ. But now that you're new. Let's take a look at Romans. Chapter 6. And look at verse number 4. He says. We were therefore buried with him. Through baptism. Through baptism. He says. Therefore buried with him. Through baptism to death. Through baptism, you know baptism is something you get merged in and you become one with it. You have to go all the way under. When you got baptized in the water, you went all the way under, made yourself one with that water, and then you came up. We were baptized in his death. The Spirit is revealing this to us. We died with him. Baptized into his death in order. See, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. He was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. 
The Father revealed him by raising him up from the dead, by giving him life. The Father revealed God's glory shined all over him. The glory is the life. And just as well as he got up, we too. He says, for if we have been united with him in a death like his. Have you been united with him in a death like his? Have you received that? We will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. A resurrection like his. What is a resurrection like his? God raised him up from the dead. God gave him life. Jesus rose from the dead. We were buried with him in baptism into his death. God raised us up with him. If you see yourself dead with him, you got to see yourself raised with him. And it's by faith that we experience this. What? We experience his death and we experience his life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is through the death that God demonstrated his righteousness, his holiness, through the death of Christ. And he said it's finished. But now it's through the resurrected life that we've been made alive. We were not made alive at the cross. Sins were forgiven. Sins were, our forgiveness was provided at the cross. But we were saved by his life through the resurrection. Oh yes, the Bible teaches that. We've been saved through the resurrection. Amen? Oh, glory to God. Now let's take another look at another scripture. I believe it's it's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Let's take a look at this one. God made him Christ who had no sin to be sin for us. He became sin for us. He didn't sin, but he became sin for us. So that in him we might what become the righteousness of God. Our sin was put on him and his righteousness was put on us. At the cross, he took our sin. At the resurrection, we took his righteousness. Hallelujah. He is the righteousness of God. And now we have been made the righteousness of God. What can separate us from the love of God? God has made us righteous. We didn't make ourselves righteous. And we can't maintain our righteousness. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? When God makes you something, you need to grab a hold of it. Because Paul says, the gospel in it is a righteousness from God. It's revealed. A righteousness from God is revealed. Whereby we are accepted. God has accepted us and called us his sons and daughters. And we are righteous before him. That righteousness, I want to tell you something, is without sin. Brand new identity. Now we're being identified with him, with Christ. We talked about how he gave his life to us. We dealt with how he's living in us. And then we talked about how we're being a brand new creation. Well, this brand new creation has our identity. We are being identified with Christ. No longer being identified with sin, with Satan, with the world. But we have been identified with him. Now, listen, God identifies us with him whether we do or not. This is God's doing. But we need our mind, our conscience, to line up with the will of God. This is the will of God for our life, is that we will be identified with him and know him as sons and daughters. And we will walk in a victorious life that God can move in and through us and show forth his glory, his goodness, and his loving kindness. Amen. So let's quickly go here. Let's deal with John chapter 1 verse 12. It says, Yet to all who received him. Now this is a question. I mean, it was a statement. 
This is for those who have received him. He said, for those who have received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. For those who believe in his name, because in his name, salvation is in his name. Well, healing, deliverance, it's in his name. He says, if you believe in his name, it is giving you a right to become a child of God. Because in his name, in his name, he conquered sin and death. In his name, he's given life to the dead. He is the God that justifies the ungodly. And I believe we all were ungodly, dead in our sins and our trespasses. But he said, because we believe in his name, he have gave us the right to become children of God. Children born, not of the natural descent, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. We've been born of God. My identity, my earthly identity, was with my father. I've been identified with my father and my mother. Uh, they bore me. They, they physically brought me into this world. And I was, I, I was identified with them. It's like the rest of my siblings who were identified with the flesh, with sinful, a sinful nature, spiritually dead, separated from God. All human, all mankind was, that's how we came into the world. But now being born of God, there's a new identity. There's a new way of living, living by the Spirit. I am so glad to know the Father today. He's my Father. I cry out to Him. I come to Him, boldly come to Him with thanksgiving in my heart of praise because He's God. Because of all His loving kindness. Not because of how good I've been, because of how good He is. But he says the power to become sons of God. Wow, wow, we're sons of God, sons and daughters of God, through the power of God. So we identify with him. Let's look at this Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. Let's read these first verses here. Let's take a look at something. He said, what shall we say? What shall we say then? You're saying you are identified with Christ. You're saying that you're a child of God. You're saying you're a Christian. And you got you received this grace. You got you walking in this grace now, and your sins been forgiven. You totally forgiven. You've been made righteous. Are you saying? Should we say? Are you? Or are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? Paul says, "May it never be." Cause that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that God has given us a life that He come to live in us. And we are identified with him. And we're going to continue in sin? No. No, we're not going to continue in sin. Because, because I was in sin when I was dead. When I was dead, I was in sin. But now that I've been made alive, I'm in God. No, I'm not going to continue in sin. Because I have a new identity. The old is gone. And the new has come. No, I'm not continuing in sin. I have a new nature. I'm a new creation. So no, I'm not continuing in sin. And my life is not going to continue in sin. Listen. How should we who died to sin still live in it? Where did we die to sin at? We died to sin in Christ. He just said we were buried with him in baptism. We were buried with him in baptism. We died with him in baptism. That we could raise, be raised with him in the newness of life. So no, we're not in sin. Oh, listen to me, somebody. Please help me. Oh, Lord. No, we died to sin. We were buried to sin. I'm not talking about your sin actions. I'm talking about your sin nature. I'm talking about what drives you to sin. I'm talking about what drives you to the lust and the pleasures of this world. I'm talking about what, 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 what you was a slave to. We're no longer that. 
We're no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves to unrighteousness. Oh, help me somebody. How should we? Who have died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all who, all of us who have been baptized, come on somebody, into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? So I died in his death when he died. What did I die to? I died to sin. Not sinning, I died to sin. Because sin makes me sin. Sin makes me continue to sinning, but I died to sin. Listen, that's that nature. Listen. And so he says, therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism and to death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead huh, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just piggybacking here. That we might walk in the newness of life. God did not make this complicated. <laughs> he did not deal with sin at the cross, make us alive, and then cause us to struggle to live for him. Amen. Living under grace. We're talking about the resurrection now. We have not gotten away from the resurrection because all that we've been talking about is living uh, under the resurrection or living the life, the resurrected life that is in Christ Jesus. That's what has been given to us. It is God's grace. Living under grace. What does that mean? Living under grace. What it means to be living under the provisions of God. God has made provisions for us in Christ Jesus. That's why we call it by faith. Because the provision has already been made. That we can enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Because the provision has been made already. The enemy has been destroyed. What stood opposed us, against us, was nailed to the cross, the law. Sin has been taken away once and for all. Here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist says. So, and then he says it's finished. Our sins have been judged at the cross. There is no sin that has not gone unpunished. Every sin was punished. The punishment was on Christ. The provision has been made for us to receive this life. To receive God's grace and unmerited favor. He's provided for us. Let's take a look at this. Romans 6 and 14. He says, for sin, listen saints, Sin shall, what? Shall not be your master. How was sin my master? Sin was my master. Sin showed me the law, took me to the law, my conscience mind, and allowed me to feel the guilt and the shame. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, it did. He said, but sin shall no longer be your master. Because you're not under law. When you're under law, sin is your master. He said, but you're no longer the law, you're under grace. When you're trying to live by obedience to the law, see, you're living by the law. And sin is your master. When you're trying to live obedience to the law, sin is your master. Because sin is going to continually Take it to the law where you're going to see yourself guilty and ashamed and not accepted before God. Because sin lies in your flesh. It's still there. It ain't going nowhere. And you can't clean it up. But glory to God. God says, crucify. When we died with him, our body, our flesh was crucified with him. In the sight of God, our flesh is dead. Sin has been done away with. 
He gives no credit to our flesh. He gives no credit to your body. He gives no credit to what you do in the flesh. He's already judged your flesh. The only thing will last is that what's been done in Christ. But he says you're no longer slaves. Slaves of sin. Because you're no longer under the law. You're not living your life according to the law. Because the law identified your sin. The law reminded you of your sin. The law reminds you and kept you in conviction, sin conscience, but you're under grace. What did grace provide for me? What did Paul say about grace? Go to Galatians chapter 2. And let's look at verse number, let's see. Verse number 20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. That's me dead. Paul says, I, I died with him. <laughs> he said, I've been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. See, my hope of glory is living in me. He gave his life to me to live in me. I'm a new creation with a new identity. I'm living under grace. God has provided me a life. That I, that I didn't have to work for. A life that I don't have to, I can't maintain the life that he gave me, but he's maintained it. I was saved by grace and sustained by grace. It is grace that has given us a life. The life is the grace. Oh, hear me somebody. The life that you've been given, it is the grace of God. And he says, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith. In the Son of God. We read this. He says, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could have been gained through the law. Christ died for nothing. If righteousness could be gained by your obedience to the law. Then Christ died for nothing. If righteousness is being gained by what you do and how good you are and the way you make it work, well then Christ died for nothing. Because righteousness is a gift from God. The Bible says a righteousness from above, apart from the law, has been given to us. That did what? That justified us in the sight of God. I'm living under grace with the provision has been made for me. Life has been given to us. Our life is the grace of God. It's the grace of God that did what? That we can live as children of God and have a fellowship with God. There it is, saints. That's the resurrection. That's the life you're living. That's the life you have been united with. We have been united with him in death. That we could be united with him in life. That we have in Christ Jesus. We are children of God. We're standing in grace. We're living in grace. We're no longer dead. But we've been made alive. God bless you. Thank you so much for allowing me to come where you are and sit with you and study and suck with you the word of God. Father, I thank you now for the blessings of the understanding that you are our wisdom and the spirit of God is still bringing understanding to us. Thank you for allowing this time to be set aside when you speak to our hearts. I pray for everyone the sound of my voice that they will pick up their Bibles and continue to search and to look and to understand by your spirit giving us understanding of who you are and what you have done. Amen. God bless you and I'll be seeing you next time.